seasoned on purpose step-by-step -step instruction for anybody who's either intimidated to cook not sure what to cook or if you tuned in today for mini vegetable pot pie guess what you're in the right place <laughs> that's what's on the menu today mini vegetable pot pie by the way if you find that this is of interest to you go ahead and smash that like button this is for my girl kim kim and i we went to church together we grew up together at holy temple church of god in christ uh, in philadelphia pennsylvania hey holy temple family always home for me <laughs> well, anyway uh, I was going to say recently, but it's not. Kim, I got your message. I told you I was going to do it. It took me a minute, but hey, we went through the summer. We're approaching fall and we're going to do it right now. Perfect time of the year for those of us on the East Coast, those on the West Coast of where it's hot and you're watching this. It's a perfect time for you too. It's a perfect time anytime to fix vegetable, chicken, any kind of meat. But today we're having mini vegetable pot pie. And guess what? We're getting ready to start right now. SOP's homemade vegetable broth. And then we want to put in, oh, four, three, four or so of garlic cloves, about three or four leaves of uh, parsley. This is my frozen parsley. So I'm going to cut off a tablespoon. And then we're going to let that come to a boil. Oh, I wish you could smell the aroma. I'm going to go ahead and drain this now. You don't have to, you can go ahead and turn, definitely turn the light off and go ahead and let this stand and become even that more flavorful. But, but what you don't wanna do is to make it too strong that you'll have, you'll taste more of this as opposed to tasting the whole part of the vegetable pot pie. All right, your choice giving you options. I'm going to get this done and turn my light out and drain it right now. Be right back. Don't go anywhere. Now we want to brown our meat, or in this case, tofu. <laughs> Two tablespoons of butter. Shh, I'm adding tofu. <laughs> my audience of one is a meat and potatoes guy. Let's see if he can tell the difference between tofu and chicken. <laughs> he has a pretty keen sense of taste, so I don't know. I'll, I'll let you know after it's all cooked and posted and stuff, I'll let you know. Or if he tastes it before I finish all of this, the recording and all that, I'll let you know. Now, for those of you that don't know, tofu will take the flavor of what Ever you season it with. All right, so typically, yeah, that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna, I have so much to say, so little time to say it. So I'm not gonna say what I wanted to say because it'll just take up more time. Tofu in the pan. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now we're not gonna let this cook through. We're just going to brown it, that's all. You use tofu. Make sure, and you wanna cut it like this, make sure you purchase the firm tofu. I had, this was a one block package of tofu and I just cut it in nicely squared pieces. Easiest thing in the world to do. I seasoned this with smoked paprika and garlic pepper, that's it. You'll see in a previous video that I made, actually it was potato salad with mom and I, and she always, she, she said, lift and turn. So you'll, <laughs> I 
tofu, definitely, you wanna lift and turn. You don't wanna mix it up because you'll tear it and you don't wanna do that. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the light out. This is perfectly brown, just the way I want it. And I'm going to remove it and place it back in this bowl here. But I'm not going to rinse the pan out and I'll tell you why. Doesn't this look just delicious? And it's tasty too, I tasted it. <laughs> you always have to taste your food. Remember that. Never give anyone food that you haven't tasted yourself. <laughs> I'm going to add a tablespoon of these onions right here. A tablespoon of scallions. Now here comes the fun part. I'd say a cup of chopped carrots. This is about a cup of celery. I'm gonna have put that in there. Oh, see these leaves right here? Yeah, are from the tip of the celery. Don't get rid of that. Let's say it this way. When you use your celery, save the leaves. And if you wanna put them in your refrigerator or in your freezer even, but save these because this is a perfect item for soup. You're welcome. <laughs> and now I'm gonna turn the light up to in between medium and high. Now this is the fun part of vegetable pot pie. You can have your own vegetables in there, whatever kind of vegetables you want. This is about a cup of a butternut squash. I'm going to do maybe a half a cup because my vegetables are adding up and I want to make sure that I have enough space to make these mini pot pies for my girl Kim. You can purchase them chopped if you want, but quite honestly, if you purchase the whole butternut squash, it's cheaper by like $3, honestly. So I purchased my butternut squash and I chopped it up. It has seeds similar to uh, cantaloupe. Right, you wanna scoop out the seeds down the bottom of the bell of the butternut squash. And then, oh, the best way to cook a butt, to peel a butternut squash is to bake it about 350 for maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the most. That softens up the skin, and then you can kind of peel it, peel it away that way. Even though you might say, well, these are pretty big chunks of butternut squash, I wouldn't worry about it because they will also get very, very soft. Okay, hold on now, we're not done. I'm so excited about this one. Can you guess? Can you see what these are? Hit me back in the comments and let me know if you guessed first. It's two types of vegetables in here. Can you see the two types? Maybe. Let me know in the comments if you guessed it before I told you. So these are Brussels sprouts and asparagus. Ding, 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 whoever got it. <laughs> Garlic pepper has its own salt in case you didn't realize it. So I didn't put a lot of salt in this dish. Oh my gosh, will you look at this? Wow, look at this. Does this look delicious, scrumptious? Mmm, I tell you, forget about that pot pie. Let's eat this right now. <laughs> Oh man, my sister Kim, I hope you're enjoying this girl. This is for you. Now, if you have a, if you have a larger skillet, I cook everything in this skillet, but because I have to add our broth, I need space. So I'm going to transfer this here into my, my Copper Chef right here. The light lit, there we go. Now I'm going to add my vegetable broth. Yeah, four tablespoons of flour. Let that all cook together. Look at that color. Doesn't that color look just delicious? To me, everything should have a nice, good color to it. 
And now we're gonna go ahead and add our tofu. Mm, mm, mm. Look at all that substance. Oh, it's making me hungry. And I already had dinner. This is for tomorrow's dinner. I'm gonna go ahead and taste it. This is delicious. <laughs> if you want soup, a hearty vegetable soup, just like this, it is perfect. Do nothing else to it if that's all you want is a hearty vegetable soup. Hey, I might make this with a little bit more additions for a hearty vegetable soup. Ding, ding, ding. What a great idea. Thank you. <laughs> Frozen peas. I'll let these go ahead and absorb and see how it's thickening up, ready for our pot pie to go in the oven. So you don't have to cook these all the way down, right? Because it's going in the oven. These are the final touches. Quarter cup of heavy whipping cream. You can just fix it any time of the year. <laughs> Butternut squash, some peas, here's the tofu. Let's see, I see Brussels sprouts. Here's a celery, piece of a celery. Yeah, it's through and through guys, all the way throughout. This is um, optional, of course, all of these are optional but I want to give it a little bit of, of a cheesy taste. Now, for those of you who are vegan and you don't want this kind, or for those of you who would rather not have a cheese in there, you can also use nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast gives it a cheesy taste. Okay, guys, I gotta tell you something. <laughs> I'm out of breath, but I went downstairs. I checked with my audience of one who, like I told you, he's a meat and potatoes man. He has the, he, he definitely has a great sense of taste. And I gave him a taste test. He said, mmm, it's good. And I said, well, this is chicken Popeye, taste the chicken. And he said, yeah, it's good, but this doesn't taste like chicken. So guys, okay, so tofu doesn't taste like chicken, but it's delicious, and guess what? He liked it, and he's going to eat it. So that's a good sign. So we are finished with this. Now we are going to just let this simmer. We'll be right back. <laughs> By the way, if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and preset your oven, <laughs> not oven, oven. <laughs> preset your oven for 400. First thing you wanna do after you get your substance ready for the pot pie, you wanna get now your dough. Now, if you haven't made pie crust before, go ahead and check out my video on pie crust, it's right there. And also, you don't wanna make it by hand, this I got from the, uh, the store. It's not by hand because it's not about making pie crust today. It's about making mini pot pie for my girl, Kim. Uh, so we're gonna put some flour right here, just enough to get this. And we're gonna put this right on top. And, oh, this is parchment paper. You definitely wanna have, if you, have, if you don't have parchment paper, parchment paper is a great thing to have because look how easily it slides through the paper if you have parchment paper. So that's what we have there. We're gonna put a little bit on top and we're just gonna stretch it out a little bit more. See how easy it stretches out if you have a little bit of flour on top and this uh, parchment paper. So that looks pretty good. If you have a cookie cutter, go ahead and use your cookie cutter. If you don't have a cookie cutter, use a bowl <laughs> with, a wide, with a wide mouth, that's all. Easy, easy. We wanna make life easy for us, not difficult. That's what I say And cooking. The easier, the better. Yeah, and see how it, and see how it comes in like that? Yeah, that's perfect. 
That's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these and then we'll be right back. The next fun part, yay! <laughs> we want now to go ahead and dip the contents, put them in the muffin pan. And so I'm gonna just show you what I do for the first time and then I'm just gonna go ahead and, and finish the rest. But And look at all that deliciousness in there. So you go ahead and just go ahead and dip. You don't, you don't wanna put a whole lot because you don't want it to overflow. I'm a little bit excited, so I think I put too much in this first one. <laughs> but I'm just gonna leave it there. Oh, the other thing is once you prepare your content for to put in for the pot pie, you definitely want to cool this off a little bit. You don't really wanna put it in hot because then it'll start cooking beforehand and making the crust too soft. So I'd say maybe like a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon. And when you're gathering, don't worry about not gathering all of the vegetables that you made in here because it's so full of everything, you're not gonna miss anything. Yeah, so we're just gonna do that and we'll be back. This is the fun part too for a family with children. You can get them to dip, you can tell them not too much, and then they dip and they dip too much. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you have kids who would enjoy doing something like this. And Kim, you know, when you make this, sis, you don't have to make this for, you can make this, oh, guess what? Guess what? Thanksgiving, right? Right. This is an appetizer. Absolutely. Wow. Let me know in the comments if this is a good idea for a Thanksgiving appetizer. I think it is. And now I'm going to actually, I'm going to put this on top because now we want to go ahead and gather these little bit up. Now I'm going to have another one. I have another one of these in this container right here. See that? Yep. So, store-bought, that's okay. We're not making it from scratch today, but this is from the, from the first one. Still have enough to go ahead and make the first one. No waste here. I'm gonna add just a sprinkle of water because it's a little bit too flaky for me. I'm gonna just put a hole right here, dent it in. Now, if you have a cookie cutter, go for it. I don't. All right, now let's see. Yeah, and you just wanna cover it. Some of the flour off. It's okay if you see a lot, it's okay. You just wanna cover it. Just go ahead and seal it in. I'm getting out. That's why you don't want to overflow it. Because <laughs> you don't want to. I'll take that out. Yeah, I'll take that out. What is it? Mmm, that's an asparagus. Mmm, one asparagus. Seasoned to perfection. Okay, so now I'm going to move that to the side a little bit. And I want to make sure that this is sealed all the way over. Pull that over. Yeah. That's right. That, and then just lay it, don't press it, just lay it. And then let the fork itself go ahead and seal it. I finished all of this, and as you can see how lovely they look, they're ready to go into the oven. 400 for about uh, 15 to 18 minutes. You don't want it to get dark dark, because then they're burnt. <laughs> but you wanna make sure that the crust is nicely golden brown. And to help that with the crust, we have an egg. And basically what you wanna do is just to go ahead and just spread the egg over the top of the crust. That will help it to turn golden brown. Like these, as opposed to the bristle ones, the hard ones that you kinda of use for barbecuing your meat, because these are nice and soft and it doesn't mess up the crust. Now, 
If you don't have one, check out my sis, Lisa D's Delights, because she has Pampered Chef going on. She has so many different items for your kitchen. So definitely check out my sis, Pampered Chef, because you can really, really get some nice things for your kitchen. Okay, so this is great. Now you wanna get a little knife. It doesn't matter. You can have a small, the, the main thing is that you don't wanna cut big. So this helps me to cut small. So you can just do like a little crisscross, right? Just ever so lightly like that. It'll put a little bit of design. Those of you who have a, who have a designer in you, go ahead and do more and I'll do that. <laughs> Basically, what you wanna do this for, do you know? Hit me up in the comments if you know why we're doing this before I tell you. So why am I doing this? I hope you guessed it. You got it. You want it to breathe. That's why you wanna give it air because if you don't give it air, it'll just not cook well. And you may have a problem on your hands in the oven. So you just wanna give it some air. As soon as I finish playing with my food, I'm gonna put this in the oven on 400. Have your, have your oven preheated to that. I'm gonna put this in the oven for 400 for about, I don't know, 15 to 18 minutes, like I said before, until the crust is golden brown. You can have variations of this if you have more than enough for your pot pie. You can prepare it in several ways. For instance, I used this Dutch oven and I have a pot pie here. And you know, it's fall. I don't do the Halloween thing, but it's fall. So you can have just like a porridge of, of soup even. And that's what this is for fall. Mmm. Look at that. Mmm. It's not too juicy. I wanted it moist. And it is moist, right? You can see that. But I didn't want the juices to flow out of here because if you're handling this with like a napkin and you're talking and you know, you're having a nice, oh, I'm left-handed, so let me switch. And so you're having a nice conversation with some friends or family, and the last thing you want is to have some juice fall over like that into your napkin. You want it to be solid inside so that you can communicate and talk and even, mm-hmm, fight too for other people are talking. It's not juicy or anything. It's perfect. So, oh, and by the way, it is delicious. It's a must try. It is just a bundle of delight in my mouth. It's crunchy and I like that. Now, I wanna tell you how I took these from, and then after it cools off, you just take a knife, and at each separation, right, you do like a, a like you cut like that, and so forth, at each separation, just separate it a little bit. You definitely wanna grease your pans. Now, uh, let me tell you, finish telling you this. Definitely grease your pans, and then after it's cooled off, Get a cold compress cloth, your, your dishwasher cloth or a, paper or a towel or something, and make sure it's cold. And just lay the pan on top of that. It kind of loosens up the, uh, the condensation underneath this uh, pot pie and the tin itself. Give it a little bit more, then you kind of want to pry it out like that. That's how I did it. So Kim, I hope I did you service, my sister, and, and showing you how to make mini pot pies. 
What I did with the tofu, same thing you can do with the chicken, same thing. But listen guys, oh my gosh, time is over, right? Can you believe it? We've been having so much fun and the time has ended. I had a great time and I hope you did too. You know that I'm praying for you, right? Anytime you want, hit me in the comments or send me an email. It's in the description below. Hey Kim, pray for me because of this, that, and the other. You got it. I'm always praying for you. All right. Anyway, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know how this turned out for you. Let me know if you liked it or not. And I think that's it. So you know what to do, guys. You make it a great day. And let me know what your day is like. Because it has to be great. Because we're making it great. All right. I'm, I must be tired. <laughs> Bye, guys. Until the next time. She's a